Hey there, good morning. Coming up on GMA, a snowstorm bringing the Denver area to a standstill. A major interstate clogged with stranded cars for hours. We are there live with the latest. And that Southwest Airlines nightmare flying to new heights. Thousands of flights canceled this morning. How new storms could make things worse as the airline struggles to get planes back in the air and passengers home. Also, we are counting down to 2023. Ryan Seacrest is joining us live with a preview of the biggest party of the year. That is all coming up right here on GMA. See you soon. And ahead in the next hour, good morning, San Antonio. Frustration boiling over for homeowners out in Bandera County. We'll talk about what's taking so long to get their water turned back on. Plus, we're taking a look at the future of the workplace and how it'll evolve in the coming year. What experts believe companies will want from employees before a recession hits. And picking out a New Year's resolution can be a little tricky. What a psychologist is saying about finding the right one and more importantly, sticking with it. Checking Transguide right now. Still flashing lights. I-10 Vance Jackson area. Stephen Cavazos is on it. And we're talking about your New Year's weekend forecast coming up. This morning on GMSA, we are gathering details on a deadly crash near 1604 on the far northwest side. What we have been able to learn so far in just a moment. Plus a bizarre shooting on the west side sends one woman to the hospital overnight. How it happened and what our police say are saying about possible suspects. And a quick look out there with live cam. Don't be fooled. We may not need that jacket. 61 degrees right now. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Yes, but we still have the heat on in the studio. I promise you. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> it is Thursday. It is December 29th. Thanks for joining us. What a difference out there in the weather, even from yesterday morning. No doubt about that. Si about 60 degrees out at the airport. You can feel the humidity, almost smell it in the air. And Justin is in for Mike. Good morning. Uh, so very different. Good morning to you guys. A lot of humidity. We're starting to see some fog. We'll see clouds today. So that'll be the difference. And it, warmer. I mean, we were going into a pretty warm stretch here as we finish out 2022. Let me show you the visibility map. Uh, not much here around San Antonio, but as you go west, there are some areas where fog becomes quite thick. That's around Rock Springs and as you get down towards Carrizo Springs and Catua this morning. Uh, we'll let you know if any problem spots do develop here in San Antonio, but so far so good. Pollen count from yesterday, molds are low, Mount Cedar is low. Uh, we are not expecting any strong northerly winds next several days, so hopefully that will keep Mount Cedar at bay as we get into 2023, although we know that in January that's when we tend to see the peak of a Mount Cedar season. Right now, 61 degrees at the airport, cloudy, calm winds. Humidity at 93%, so yes, it is sticky out there in the forecast today. Just a small chance of a shower, some drizzle this morning, and then maybe a shower or storm this afternoon. But this is generally going to be east of San Antonio. Temperatures will make their way up to around 72 this afternoon. Let's get over to Stephen now for a look at your traffic this morning. Has anything changed? Uh, well, we are still seeing some issues out there, Justin. Uh, now, we're going to start here with US 90 at Couples. Uh, originally, this was actually reported as a crash, but I uh, just received an update from our friends over at TechStot. It does actually look like it's not as serious as we initially thought. A stalled vehicle out there, but still one of the busier spots in round town. So you notice that US 90s, you will tend to see more traffic that builds up there. But it does look like we do have a first responder out there, if not a TechStot hero truck working to help that driver out. All right, we're going to start here with a wide look at the map now as we take you in lots of green there. So uh, still be on the lookout. We still have this stall vehicle also out there along Vance Jackson I 10 westbound as you approach that area. Just be sure to be aware that first responders are working to help that driver out over there. But other than that, the roads have been clear, but that doesn't mean the problems haven't been uh, reported. We still have that deadly crash that was reported along the far northwest side, and that's where we find our Camelia Wadis. Camelia, what's the very latest? Stephen, the, the scene is clear. Fire crews just took the damaged car away about 30 minutes ago. But you also take a look at the scene from earlier. The car is crunched up against the tree. And then San Antonio police say they got the call around 2 this morning. When police arrived, they found two men who died from this crash. San Antonio police say the car was heading down Braun from 1604 when it crashed into a tree. Extra fire crews were brought out to cut open the car and see how many people were inside so far we know it's just these two men it's unclear their age the medical examiner's office will have to identify them now police believe speed may have been involved in this crash but the investigation continues but for now Braun road is open reporting live on the far far northwest side camelia juarez case at 12 news
Thank you. Now to developing story we've been tracking overnight. A woman's in the hospital after getting shot in the leg. San Antonio police say it happened along the 1000 block of San Fernando Street on the west side near Apache Creek. A woman in her 50s was taken to University Hospital and is going to be OK. SAP believes an ongoing problem between apartments could have led to the shooting, but so far there is no word on suspects. After two weeks, San Antonio police have arrested a suspect accused in a deadly crash that killed two teens. The man you see here, 23-year-old Leroy Morales, is charged with failure to stop and render aid, resulting in death. The crash happened back on December 16th along the 2800 block of Rigsby Avenue. Police say the teens were walking on the crosswalk when they were hit by a car before that car took off. The victims have since been identified as 15-year-old Jordan Canedo and 17-year-old James Solis. A major multi-vehicle crash happened last night on the eastbound lanes of Highway 90 near Highway 211 out in West Bear County. The River County Sheriff's Office says traffic was diverted at State Highway 211 and westbound at W.T. Montgomery because of the crash. Injuries and what caused the wreck are unknown at this time. BCO says the area was impacted for several hours while deputies conducted their investigation. Guadalupe County Fire Rescue started their first overnight shift with full-time firefighters. The Guadalupe County Fire Marshal says the new shift started at midnight. There will now be three firefighters on duty 24-7. They will handle a 36-square-mile area. The Fire Marshal says the goal of this move is to provide more fire protection for their community. In your morning consumer headlines, Amazon possibly going deeper into sports casting. The e-commerce giant reportedly working on a new standalone streaming app just for sports content. That includes Amazon's Prime's Thursday night NFL package. It's unclear when the app may be released, if it's released at all. A Louisiana health care system says it was a victim of a ransomware attack. Lake Charles Memorial Health says patient names, social security numbers, payment information, and other data was compromised back in October. As many as 270,000 people could be vulnerable. And the Waze navigation app testing a new alert that notifies drivers about roads with a history of crashes. The app highlights the high-risk road in red on the map. The feature is expected to be released to the general public soon. Drivers will have the app option to turn it off. 606, 61 degrees. Still to come on GMSA, a busy night in sports starts here with the Alamo Bowl. We're going to have a preview of tonight's action, plus some fun from a galaxy far, far away. But after the break, picking out a New Year's resolution can be downright tricky. What a psychologist is saying about finding the right resolution and sticking with it. And taking a look outside there with live cam, significantly warmer than it has been in the morning. We're at 61 degrees. We'll be right back. Six ten as we enter a new year, it's a chance for some of us for a fresh start as many of us consider things we can do better. ABC's Alexis Christophorus has some ways to make and keep your New Year's resolution. This time of year, many Americans commit to a New Year's resolution, but sticking to it isn't easy. Resolutions are specifically hard to keep because they're often a decision to either do or to not do something. Licensed psychologist Dr. Melissa Bodine says to think about setting a goal rather than a resolution, and more specifically, a SMART goal. So a SMART goal, I hear this acronym a lot, is a goal that is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. So make sure your goal is not vague, like I want to be more active, but specific, such as I want to run a marathon and make it measurable so you can track your progress. Instead of I just want to lose weight, it's I want to lose 10 pounds. Dr. Bodine says to make sure it's attainable considering the amount of time and effort it will take and relevant to the bigger accomplishments you want to achieve in your life. If your broad goal is to be more creative, maybe writing a book is a good goal for you, but maybe running a marathon isn't. And set a goal that is time bound by having a date you want to reach it by. Once you've set your goal, write it down and break it up into smaller steps. If your goal is to run a marathon, step one could be signing up. You are much more likely to do the training and to accomplish the goal if you've already signed up for it, you have a date for it. Set a smaller goal for each week, rewarding yourself when you reach your weekly goals. You know, watching your favorite show on Netflix, you're saving it till the end of the week until you hit your goal. 
Dr. Bowden says if you miss a step, get back on the horse and know that you can still make progress toward your goal. Progress is hard. Give yourself grace. <laughs> if you had a one extra cheat day or whatever it may be, wake up the next morning and start again. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. I, I haven't thought of any yet. Have you? No. Nope. 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 I mean, some people <laughs> resolve not to yeah. have any. You yeah. Know, you work on stuff throughout the year, but don't just put all that pressure on yourself here. Right. I might. I might not have one. I don't know. We'll ask me next year. <laughs> next, next year, I will. Stephen, uh, have you thought of anything yet? I, I have. Okay. Uh, incorporating yoga uh, at least oh. once a week. Uh, I did that. I had that solutionary story that helped oh, yeah. better sleep. So, gonna make that practice. Let's try making that a weekly thing. And why don't we all do it? Okay. 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 All right. Yeah. Well putting them on the spot, but we'll, we'll, we'll work on that next year. Let's talk about what's happening right now, at least up until the end of the year. Uh, quiet roadways, hopefully, is what we're going to continue to see right now. 1604 at Spurs Ranch, you can see really just not a lot out there. The job has been pretty easy for the last few days for me, but unfortunately, there are still some issues that pop up out there. We want to make sure that you're aware of what is going on in and around the Alamo City. We had a stalled via bus that was reported along I-10 westbound near Vance Jackson Road. Um, just checking the corner of my eye at Transguide, it doesn't appear that it's uh, no longer an issue. And as we give you a wide look at the map, this is what we really have been seeing for the last few mornings. Just again, a lot of quiet roadways. However, keep in mind, we still have that deadly crash that was reported on the far northwest side uh, off of Braun Road near Loop 1604. And that's where Camelia Wattis has been giving us the updates. But the good news is that we know that it's not impacting traffic at this hour, but we will hear from her a little bit later on. Uh, also be on the lookout because we do have some road work taking place up until New Year's Eve. That is along Worsbach Parkway. Uh, that begins at 9 in the morning and should wrap at 3 in the afternoon. You will see some alternating lane closures in both directions from Blanco Road to Thousand Oaks Drive. But you know what? Scan your QR code that's now on the screen. That will take you to our KSAT traffic page. We know that there's a lot of folks that are visiting from out of town as well. My dad included. Hopefully he's watching right now. Uh, scan that QR code, Dad. That will let you know what areas to avoid and, of course, help you plan your commute ahead of time. Hi, Steven's dad. Hi. 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 Good morning. I bet you he's asleep. Oh, I'm going to text him and find out. <laughs> Tell him to wake up so we can wave at him again. Yeah, I'll try yeah. again. All right. <laughs> and all the uh, Washington and UT fans in town. I saw a bunch of buses yesterday. I was like, oh, that's got to be one of those teams. Mm -hmm. Downtown is busy. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Uh, we welcome all those folks that are in town. And, and they're coming at a good time because the weather's going to be really pretty oh, nice. Perfect time. Yeah, temperatures in the 70s today. It, it's going to be a little cloudy, but uh, we'll see some sun over the weekend if you're going to stay and celebrate New Year's Eve right here in San Antonio. Always a good celebration. Let's take a look back at 2022. 16 was the coldest temperature that we witnessed, and that was on December 23rd, just a few days ago. Got down to 16. Of course, wind chill values were close to zero. Hottest? 107. That was on July 11th. We had heat indices up close to 110. So that kind of gives you an idea of the extremes this year. Uh, 91 degree temperature difference between that high and that low. Uh, we had a similar difference last year. So some pretty uh, intense temperatures both ways. And now we're just kind of evening out a little bit. We're also going to finish the year at second driest on record. It appears 11.51. The average is 32.19. We're going to finish just behind 1917, where they only saw 10.11 inches of rain. Kind of hard to imagine that we just got a little over 10 inches. I mean, uh, usually, again, we're somewhere around 30 inches or so. So it's been a rough year rain-wise, too. As we go outside for you, cloudy skies, 61, 63 at Stinson, 60 at Kelly, 63 Randolph. Not a lot of wind out there. And temperatures, dew points getting close together. That is resulting in some fog in spots, namely out towards Rock Springs. We've also seen that around Carrizo Springs and Catua, kind of where that leading edge of the moisture is interacting with some cooler temperatures out west. 65 in New Braunfels, 66 Gonzales here around Bear County. We've got low 60s, 63 degrees, as we said over at Randolph. 62 up there at Kenya Lake, and dew points are in the upper 50s. It is uh, almost sticky out there with the way this humidity is setting up this morning. And that humidity is surging north into places like Oklahoma and Arkansas, places where it has been so very cold in this moisture. Well, it always keeps temperatures up at night, so that's why uh, it is feeling quite a bit warmer out there. With that moisture streaming north, though, there is a threat for a few strong storms in this area shaded in pink. Yes, there is a chance for rain today. A little bit of drizzle this morning and then one or two showers east of San Antonio today. And the further east you go, the little uh, the, the more you have a chance for rain. And, and there again, a couple of storms well east of San Antonio. So let's look at the forecast. A lot of clouds don't look for much sun today. And then by three o'clock, there we go. A couple showers starting to pop up. 
And then uh, a little better chance maybe this evening as you go north and east of town. A lot of clouds tomorrow too. There's a chance for a few light showers through the day tomorrow. Nothing that's going to be significant. So that, that's why we're not anticipating adding a whole lot to our rain total for the year. Uh, this is tomorrow still shows a few showers out there, but as we head into the weekend, the clouds finally get out of here and we get some really nice weather both Saturday and Sunday. So the case had 12 hour forecast today. Some fog and drizzle this morning by noontime 66 and cloudy 68 at one o'clock and then this afternoon 72 with a 20% chance of rain. Here's the uh, big picture and we've got a trough uh, with an uh, area full of pressure there around Denver bringing some uh, pretty good snowfall there that is starting to shift east and then a lot of extreme weather as you go out west along the west coast. Uh, New Year's forecast 76 Saturday 78 Sunday really looking pretty good. We'll get more humidity on Sunday, uh, but all is good for any celebrations you have planned. The extended forecast will go 70 tomorrow. You see the weekend there 79 Monday. That's our next chance of rain about a 20% chance is another storm system comes through and then 70s Tuesday and Wednesday. But this is a, a really good looking seven day forecast as we officially enter into 2023. And uh, again, for all those folks that are in town for the bowl game or if you're staying for New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, it's it's uh, looking good. I can't guarantee that, you know, flights in and out of here will oh. cooperate, but <laughs> you have no uh, control over right. that. No, we don't. Well. But, uh, you know, there are still some storm systems across the country, namely out west, that are going to still cause some travel delays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so keep that in mind. Well, yeah. welcome to San Antonio. We hope you have a great time. Yes. Yes. Welcome. 618, 61 degrees on your Thursday morning. And up next, the Alamo Bowl isn't the only Texas-sized matchup tonight for football fans. A preview of the Cowboys-Titans game in Nashville for Thursday Night Football. Kohl's biggest clearance event for savings you don't want to miss. Save up to 70% starting now on must-haves like home essentials, active favorites, jeans, sweaters, boots, and PJs. Kohl's. I'm not slowing down anytime soon. That's why I take OsteoBiflex every day. It's clinically shown to improve joint comfort in seven days and continues to improve over time. Kind of like us. OsteoBiflex. Find our coupons in Sunday's paper. It's nothing. Sounds like something. When you have nausea, heartburn, indigestion, unsystematic diarrhea. Pepto-Bismol coats and soothes for fast relief when you need it most. At the real real, luxury is Gucci, Hermes, Louis Vuitton, luxury is scoring something amazing for 90% off retail. It's thousands of new finds every day. The real real, where luxury is yours to define. Shop now and get 20% off at therealreal.com. Term supply. In this morning's GMA First Look, one of the moms who helped bring a missing Ohio baby home speaking out. I knew in my heart that it was her. Um, I knew for a fact. Cheyenne Belmar saw the mugshot of the wanted suspect and recognized her. I seen the mugshot and I'm, I'm like, this person looked familiar, but I'm not knowing from where. The pair meeting at an Indiana gas station hours earlier and exchanging information. She finally came outside. She told us to pull out in front of the house. We pull out in front of the house. She gets in the car. The next day, Belmar and her cousin picking the woman up in their car to help bring her to justice. Me calling her back was to make sure that she was still in Indianapolis and that I could figure out a way to get her into custody. And coming up at 7 a.m., how they say they led police officers to the kidnapping suspect. I didn't think that I would be a part of anything like this ever in my life. With your GMA First Look, I'm Matt Rivers. ABC News, New York. It is game day. The Alamo Bowl is finally here. Here's the trophy alongside the helmets for UW, University of Washington, and Stephanie's beloved University of Texas Longhorns. Longhorns and Huskies will battle it out tonight. The Alamo Dome and what many expect to be a high-scoring affair. The over-under, 67.5 points. Both coaches say their teams are ready to go. At the moment, Texas is favored by three. Kickoff is set tonight at 8. You can watch it on ESPN. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. I turn to the NFL. The Cowboys are in Nashville to play the Titans tonight on Thursday Night Football. Tonight's matchup won't affect the Titans playoff hopes, which will be decided by the outcome of their Week 18 game with the Jacksonville Jaguars. The winner will claim the AFC South and advance to the playoffs. At 11-4, the Cowboys have secured a playoff spot. They also have a shot at winning the East should the first-place Eagles stumble. 
Tennessee has ruled out seven players, including quarterback Ryan Tannehill. Running back Derrick Henry is doubtful with a hip injury. Dak Prescott was asked, did the injuries for the Titans make it tough to game plan? Honestly, I don't ever really care what they're doing on the other side. Um, as I just said, it's about us just building momentum, grabbing confidence with each game that we do, um, and just moving forward, as I said, as we play these last two out and head over into the postseason. Um, yeah, if they want to roll us the ball a couple of times and let us go from there, I'm, <laughs> I'm all for that. Uh, so we'll take it however they want to do it. Defensive end Sam Williams, who was involved in a nasty car wreck a week ago, was a full participant at practice Wednesday and is expected to play kickoff tonight is at 7:15. Capping a busy night for sports, the Spurs back home to host the New York Knicks at 7 o'clock at the AT&T Center here in San Antonio. A reminder for Spurs fans, it'll be Star Wars night, so make sure you bring your best Star Wars gear. And Steph just looked up a promotional poster for it. it looks like it's gonna be an yeah, awesome game it looks like it's gonna be fun i mean it's gonna be packed there and also you know at the alamo dome a very busy night for the alamo city yeah go spurs go and go Lawrence. <laughs> time now 625 and 61 degrees for now coming up next at 6 30 frustration is boiling over for homeowners in bandera candy we're gonna hear from them and look at what's taking so long for their water to get turned back on That's plus not the video there though. as we head into 2023 we're looking at the future of the workplace and how it'll evolve in the the coming year what experts believe companies will want most from employees and a quick look at the roads with transguy looking over at loop 410 at east houston things are looking slightly busier than earlier we're gonna get an update with our stephen cavazos after the break I think the worst part was was when they canceled our flight they didn't give us our luggage so these clothes have been on us for four days <laughs> These four days right now on GMSA is demands of accountability for Southwest Airlines continues. Passengers who have been stranded for multiple days are still searching for answers this morning. Plus, a District 10 Councilman Clayton Perry in San Antonio police handcuffs. We're going to look at the charges in the hit and run case and what comes next. Great news in the weather department. It's going to be gorgeous over the next couple of days. We have some morning clouds out there, but the best part is it's 61 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, December 29th, and welcome to the warmer weather. Yeah, 61 degrees. We'll take that after that cold freeze. No doubt about that. It's warmer. Uh, it feels more humid out there. And one of our first questions for Justin Horn, who's in for Mike this morning, was, is there any fog out there this morning? There is some. We haven't seen much here around San Antonio. Usually when we get these surges of moisture, we start to get fog building around the area. We'll, we'll show you the spots where fog is at its worst right now. And that's really out west. Here in San Antonio, as I said, visibility is just fine. You go out to Rock Springs, Carissa Springs, and Catula, though, you will find some thick fog, and it may reduce visibility for a time this morning. Otherwise, it is just warm. Cloudy today, humid. There could be a couple of showers or storms east of San Antonio and maybe a shower or two Friday. But I'll tell you, both days, our rain chances are not great. I wouldn't anticipate it. I mean, uh, you might want to have the umbrella on standby, but our rain chances are pretty low. Uh, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day looks good. Temperatures will be in the 70s. We'll have sunny skies. All is well there. 61 right now. Cloudy and dew point is at 59. Let's look at the forecast today. We're going to keep clouds across the board here, so not a lot of sun with this added moisture, the cloud cover really thickens up some. 64 degrees at 10 o'clock, 66 noontime. We'll top out close to 72. There is that 20% chance of rain against San Antonio points east later this afternoon. Let's get you set for your morning commute. If you are headed to work this morning, what's the latest, Stephen? You know, it's been a copy and paste uh, type of situation out on the roadways, Justin. Let's get a quick look around town. 10 at New Braunfels. Getting a bit busier there at 410 at East Houston. We did have a stalled vehicle that was reported out there a little while ago, but it does appear that may have already cleared out. But something that is already picking up is definitely a lot of these, uh, these vehicles out on the roadway. 35 there as you approach 37, you will see a lot more traffic. Even 35 at uh, Maine, you can see that traffic's built building there as well. This is actually a little bit different than what we saw the last few days. Honestly, it looks a lot busier out there, and that could be because people are just getting the day started early or maybe, hey, they're heading to work. So this is what you can expect right now on the map. Just a lot of quiet roadways, even though traffic's building. We aren't seeing any major issues reported. 
Now keep in mind we did have that deadly crash uh, that was reported on the far northwest side along Braun Road at Loop 1604. Uh, that has already cleared out, but still keep it uh, keep it safe out there because the roads are quiet. But again, we are seeing a little bit more activity out there right now. If your travels are going to take you right into the Alamo City, I 10 eastbound that journey from Bernie 24 minutes right now to the Alamo City, 28 minutes on 281 southbound heading in from Bulverde and on along I 35 southbound from New Braunfels. 25 minutes is what you can expect right now. Now. But back here on TransGuide, again, just steady traffic there at 10 at Cincinnati. Uh, no big issues to report, at least at this hour, but we'll be keeping a close eye on things and give you those updates throughout the morning. Mark Stuff. Stephen, thank you. New this morning, San Antonio police say a woman is in the hospital right now after she was shot in the head overnight. Officers made that discovery just after 2 this morning near the intersection of East Commerce and Honey Boulevard. Police said the woman was driving along East Commerce and ran into a Texas lawman security vehicle. When the guard got out to check on the woman, she had been shot in the head. She was taken to Bamsey in critical condition. Right now, police have no leads on a suspect at this time. District 10 Councilman Clayton Perry has now been arrested on DWI charges for a hit and run case. Perry is suspected of crashing his Jeep Wrangler head on into a Honda Civic before driving away from the scene. That incident landed Perry out of the city council chambers and into San Antonio police handcuffs. A first time DWI charge is considered a class B misdemeanor, which carries a maximum fine of $3,000 along with a six month jail sentence. Perry has since been released on bond. The crash happened back on November 6th. San Antonio police released the body cam footage four days later. On November 14th, City Council held a special meeting where they issued a vote of no confidence for Perry. That's the same day that Perry took a temporary leave of absence. Mike Gallagher was announced as his replacement on December 1st. KSET has reached out to Perry for comment and he has not responded. Meanwhile, Texas Water Utilities slowly turning the tap back on for customers. It's working to lift boil water notices issued this week. Several subdivisions got water back over the last two days, but many homeowners in Bandera County are still waiting for that good news. That includes the Lake Medina Shores neighborhood. Homeowners say they haven't had water or have had water off and on since last Thursday or Friday. See, the water's not on at all. There's nothing. There was no hype to get Christmas dinner made because I couldn't do dishes. It's not a, a want, it's a need, it's a necessity. Come and fix these pipes. Other subdivisions currently under the boil water notice are Holiday Villages of Medina in Bandera County, Oak Ridge and Verde Park Estates in Kerr County, and the Oaks North Mobile Home Estates here in Bear County. In your morning headlines, growing demands of accountability for the Southwest Airlines meltdown. It's going to be days before things are finally but truly back to normal, which is not exactly what any passengers stranded for days in airports want to hear. As ABC's Rihanna and Allie reports, the number of flight cancellations continue to climb. More than 2,300 Southwest flights are already canceled today, marking the fourth straight day. The airline has canceled more than 50% of its scheduled flights. Exhausted. I'm ready to go to bed. I'm ready to go to sleep immediately. In all, more than 13,000 Southwest flights in the past week have been canceled. Stranded passengers forced to sleep in airports as unclaimed luggage piles up across the country. I think the worst part was was when they canceled our flight, they didn't give us our luggage. So these clothes have been on us for four days. <laughs> And now United and Americans say they have put caps on fares in big cities where they compete with Southwest to help people get home. While other airlines have recovered from last week's massive storm, Southwest issues have lingered. Experts say that's because the airline uses a point to point operating system, which makes it vulnerable to major disruptions compared to other carriers routing flights through key hubs. Some passengers like Brendan Chavez are not waiting for a new flight. He's renting a car to drive his family 25 hours from Kansas City to California. We'll probably end up bringing each other's necks by the end of it, potentially, but we'll see how it goes, I guess. And in Texas, dozens of angry passengers arrived in Houston after driving 24 hours from New York City. I hate them. I need to drive nine more hours. My feet are swollen. I'm upset. I'm stressed. Southwest chief executive has apologized to customers, and the airline says it will work on a case-by-case -case basis to refund passengers for, quote, reasonable travel expenses as the federal investigation now gains momentum. They need to make sure that these stranded passengers get to where they need to go and that they are provided adequate compensation. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York.
Meanwhile, back here at home, it's still frustrating for many Southwest passengers in San Antonio. As the airline continues to cancel or delay flights, many are having a hard time finding their luggage. At San Antonio International, some passengers have spent hours and hours waiting on bags to arrive. Others told Case had a familiar tale of family members stranded at connecting airports. Passengers also say they have had to make those unexpected road trips. They had told us that the flight was canceled. So we were left with no recourse other than to try the next day. And we decided just to drive up. So we drove up. We drove up 17 hours. My sister and her husband, their kiddos, their flight got canceled this morning for their 9.30 a.m. flight. Ours was fine. Uh, my dad kept trying to get them put on our flight, but they couldn't. And it turned out to be 40 empty seats on our flight. When we landed uh, just 10 minutes late, we're actually really happy. Like, that's the least of our worries. Passengers with flights scheduled before Monday, January 2nd, can make flight changes at no additional cost on the Southwest website or their app. No calling or standing line required. All the info is listed on our website at ksat.com. There's a few bright spots out there. Mm -hmm. I was telling Steph, my son is flying from Denver to Baltimore, Washington today. So far, so good. Flights on time and uh, other flights appear to be on time, but it's not, we're not completely out of the woods right. yet. So that's, that's good news. Let's just hope that continues. Fingers crossed, yes. right? 638, 61 degrees. Up next on GMSA, we are taking a look at the future of the workplace and how it will evolve in the coming year. What experts believe companies will want most from employees. All right, this morning we're just days away from the new year. And experts say we're going to continue to see a people-focused approach where companies invest more in their people in 2023. But as Nancy Alvarez reports, with the recession looming, the workplace will also demand more from everyone. From the physical to the mental and all the work in between, the way we work is changing. I'm working more remotely. I think that the old office, being in the office, is, is antiquated. More time off, um, like three days in a row or four days in a row. With the changing work environment, both employees and employers will be evolving. First, for employers, experts say upskilling will be more important than ever facilitating continuous learning with virtual or online courses, lunch and learn sessions, and mentorship programs is a must. You gotta be growing, learning, teaching other people, growing other people around you, and focusing on the best parts. Stay interviews will be more important than exit interviews. Management will be rethinking the employee experience by doing things like asking employees which perks they prefer and flexibility with schedules will be the new normal. But with that said, more will be expected from the employees. You go in and you make yourself known. You want to be the person of influence in the room. Create a personal mission statement for the year and for the next five years. List the new skills you want and how you can get them and keep track of your successes. Most importantly, like surround it. yourself with positive idea. people okay. who are focused on moving yeah. forward. Because if your company is growing, well, you will be idea. too. I'm Nancy Alvarez reporting. Now, it should be noted, experts also say having a positive attitude in the workplace won't necessarily make you better at your job. But it will improve the way people view you as a person, so they will be more inclined to help you succeed. Let's check on traffic. It's just about 644. Well, we're keeping it positive over here, guys. Uh, thankfully, no major issues at this hour, 1604 at Military Drive. We did have some issues reported on the far northwest side. Unfortunately, a pretty serious crash. Uh, we'll have more on that a little bit later on in the day. But basically, this is what we have been seeing the last few mornings. For anyone that has to head out in the next few minutes or so, you can expect some quiet roadways. But keep this in mind, although it's still a holiday for a lot of folks, our tech stock crews are out there working to improve the roadways. We're going to see some work continue along Loop 1604 in the northeast side of San Antonio well into the new year. So expect this striping and barrier work that will take place starting on Tuesday, January 3rd. That wraps on Saturday, January 7th. It is overnight, 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Alternating lane closures on Loop 1604 eastbound from Nacogdoches Road to I-35 is what drivers can expect to see out there overnight. So late night owls early bird commuters. Just watch out for those crews. Let's get you back here on Trans Guide. Again, uh, pretty quiet here in town, but again, we have to also keep in mind we did have that serious crash, a deadly crash reported on the far northwest side in the early hours of the morning. That is cleared out, but just as a reminder, make sure to be safe out there. There are some drivers that are new to San Antonio, so we have to make sure that we're kind on the roadways. Thank you, Stephen. That's true. A lot of visitors and at least, mm -hmm. you know, the weather will be nice, decent.
It will. It will be more San Antonio-like compared yes. to what we were dealing with in the last four or five days with that bitter cold. Uh, the dew point change really is the thing that just jumps off the page today. You got dew points some 25 to 30 degrees higher than they were yesterday, and you can feel it if you go outside. The humidity is really thickening up as we speak, and that has resulted in fog in a few spots, especially as you go out west, Rock Springs, Catula, Carrizo Springs, not much fog here around San Antonio. As we go outside for you and take a look, yeah, visibility looks just fine. 61 degrees right now at the airport. Dew point is at 59 calm winds. And temperatures uh, right around 60 here in town. As you go east, you're going to find warmer numbers because the humidity is even thicker in places like New Braunfels, Gonzales, LaGrange. The humidity falls off a little bit as you go west. Hence the cooler numbers, 54 Rock Springs, 50 in Del Rio. Around San Antonio right now, we range anywhere from 61 to 63 there on the uh, south side of Bear County. Here's a look at the forecast. We've got a lot of clouds today and I don't anticipate seeing much sun. So we'll have some low clouds, probably some high clouds over top of that. Then as we get into the afternoon, a couple of showers possible, maybe even a rumble of thunder, but that's all going to be San Antonio points east in the rain chance. Well, it's pretty low uh, as we get into this evening. Same story. Uh, with a few showers and then some heavier thunderstorms up across eastern parts of Texas and northeast Texas. Then tomorrow as more energy works through, I, I think we could get some light showers. It'll be drier tomorrow. Dew points do fall off some. So anything that falls is going to be really pretty light through the day on Friday, but I can't rule it out. So 10 to 20 percent chance of rain through tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. Then that all clears out and we get the clear skies for the weekend. Your case had 12 hour forecast by 8 o'clock. We're at 61, so not much changes. Cloudy at 11 a.m. 65, 1 p.m. 68, 71 at 3 o'clock, and then we top out somewhere around 72 degrees today. That rain chance again during the afternoon at 20 percent. Dew point trend. So yes, it is humid today. Dew points fall off tomorrow and Saturday. Build back on Sunday. So Sunday will be a fairly humid day. And then on Monday we get another push of dry air that brings dew points back down. Uh, some weak frontal batteries. Nothing that cools us down all that much. It just uh, brings the humidity up and down, if you will, over the long term. Futurecast shows this first storm system that will bring us our small rain chances today and tomorrow moving east. Then over the weekend, we get some good weather for New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Then by next week, we mentioned humidity comes back up on Sunday, and that's out ahead of this next storm system that pulls in as we get into Monday. And we'll have a shot at rain there. It's another small window, not a great chance. Most of the energy is staying north of us. So for the most part, our rain chances will be low on Monday, but this will be another big weather maker for the country. A lot of snow up across the Rocky Mountains. There will be some rain and thunderstorm activity uh, up to our north and east. So the extended forecast will go 70 tomorrow, 76 Saturday, 78 Sunday. New Year's Eve, New Year's Day looks great. A lot of sun on Saturday, maybe a bit more cloud cover Sunday. There's that small chance of rain Monday and then the 70s Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, 70s across the board and overnight lows. They do get a little chillier in spots uh, Saturday morning, uh, Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning. Cooler, but it's just not cold. Not like what we saw last week. It's a nice break. It is. Yes. And really, those, those are ideal temperatures. I mean, you can't complain about mid 70s. That's... We call this Chamber of Commerce weather. Yes. 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 Other than the cloud cover today. Right. Uh, it's it's going to be really nice. Okay. Great for visitors. Yep. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. 648, 61 degrees on your Thursday. And looking ahead, when your New Year's Eve headache drops like the big city ball, you're going to be desperate for some relief. We're going to look at some popular recipes for a hangover cure tomorrow on GMSA. That's right. We're making no assumptions about how you're going to party or bring in the new year, but it'll <laughs> just, be there just, just in, in case. case. <laughs> uh, outside right now, we do see those morning clouds in place. Nice 61 degrees. Great way to start the Thursday. Glad you're with us. Hey there, good morning. Coming up on GMA, a snowstorm bringing the Denver area to a standstill. A major interstate clogged with stranded cars for hours. We are there live with the latest. And that Southwest Airlines nightmare flying to new heights. Thousands of flights canceled this morning. How new storms could make things worse as the airline struggles to get planes back in the air and passengers home. Also, we are counting down to 2023. Ryan Seacrest is joining us live with a preview of the biggest party of the year. That is all coming up right here on GMA. See you soon.
Before we go this morning, a headline we've been keeping track of this morning. A massive fire raging more than 12 hours at a hotel casino has killed at least 11 people overseas in Cambodia. CNN reports dozens of people were trapped and rescuers say calls for help were heard hours after that fire began in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Social media videos showed people falling from the roof after apparently being trapped. A firefighter said the massive size of the fire inside the casino complex made it difficult for their water cannons to reach the blaze. That casino employed about 400 workers and was popular with foreign gamblers in town just four hours from Thailand's capital of Bangkok. And I understand the death toll has now risen to 19 people. The Vatican says Pope Emeritus Benedict, Benedict's health has worsened over the past hours and doctors are constantly monitoring his condition. Pope Francis has appealed to the faithful to pray for his very ill predecessor until the end. A Vatican spokesperson said Francis went to visit the 95-year-old Benedict in the monastery on Vatican grounds where he has lived since retiring in February of 2013. The spokesperson said Benedict's situation at the moment remains under control. Benedict was the first pontiff to resign in 600 years. Here at Home Looking Ahead, we invite you to go behind the lens with some of our KSAT photojournalists. Uh, KSAT is airing a one-hour special tonight at 9 p.m. presented by our talented staff. They will tell you what stories they remembered the most in 2022 and take you behind the scenes on what goes into covering the stories that you see right here on KSAT. Covering traffic for us at about five till, Stephen Cavazos. All right, thank you, Mark. Steph, let's get one last look around town. The commute uh, definitely picking up there, 281 at Nicoma. And a lot of these shots of Transguide, we're going to see a lot more folks out there this morning. But the good news is kiddos are still staying home for the holidays, at least up until the new year. So we can enjoy some quiet roadways right now. Uh, no issues to report, so just remember to drive safe out there. Lots of green on the screen, really not seeing any other problems. But quick check at those inbound times. If you're going to be traveling in from any of these communities, no need to rush. We are still in the green, Justin. Stephen, thank you. We're tracking a little bit of fog and spots. Not much here around San Antonio. We're in the low 60s right now. A lot of clouds today. Temperatures 64, 10 o'clock, 66 noontime. Just a very small chance of a shower, maybe a thunderstorm east of San Antonio, and a lot of 70s in the extended forecast. This is some pretty nice weather as we end 2022 and make our way into 2023. 70 tomorrow, mostly cloudy, small chance of a shower, but it clears out for the weekend. 76 Saturday, 78 for New Year's Day, and then 79 Monday. That's when our next chance of rain will show up. We'll have a lot of humidity to start the week with that the small chance of a shower or storm, and then after that, it clears out again. So not great rain chances, but they are there, and we'll monitor the radar, the fog, all that good stuff today. And don't forget traffic around the Dome and the AT&T yeah. Center yes. tonight. Lots going on. We've got the Valero Alamo Bowl at the mm -hmm. Alamo Dome, and the Knicks are in town. Spurs taking on the Knicks tonight as well. Who are you rooting for tonight the Alamo Bowl, Steph? <laughs> <laughs> Longhorns, of course. And right. the Spurs. And the at Spurs. At the AT&T Center. And the Spurs. Yeah, good luck to all. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here at 9. Good shot.